you seem to assume a static view of the culture that uh, it would not change based on generations of people coming to the U.S., but it seems that uh, that experience proves otherwise. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? No, I have to be clear what you mean by a static view of culture. Uh, that um, people's values do not change when they uh, enter a new community? Well, what is happening is that they are changing the values of these communities. It is not, you know, you've got this assumption that we are the big bad majority, we are the big majority, there's only a few of them, and we can make them speak with American accents, and they will, nothing will change, that they will become American in spirit and so forth, nothing will change. But that's not what's happening. What's happening is, they are changing the culture, and not always to the better. I can give you a specific example, if you like, that happened only last week. Uh, I live in Arizona, and I can give you quite a few counterexamples. Yeah, I'm sure, but what's the, that is not the point I made. The point I made was that your people will not walk the earth. If the Chinese can have China, and Mexicans can have Mexico, why can't you have a country of your own? Why does your country have to be the property of everybody and you have to be dispossessed? That was the point. I guess my understanding of, uh, of America was that it was based on a set of values, not on... Uh, I understand you, sir. I understand you. In fact, the other day, um, people who are shout were pontificating on CNN and MSNBC that America is an idea. Well, that's the state you've come to, that a country is no longer a country, it's now an idea. However, if you looked at your... Are you American? Yes. Well, if you... I'm Arizona. Well, are you American? I'm Arizona. Well, that's not a country. <laughs> if you looked at your own... If you looked at your own history, you would find that the Founding Fathers wrote a constitution in which they said, we are writing this for our posterity. I don't think that they would consider the Chinese students prowling around here as their, poster as their posterity. Secondly, the Founding Fathers did write an immigration law only six years after writing the Constitution. And you know what that immigration law said? Immigration is restricted to free white persons. By free, they meant not indentured. Yes, uh, real quick. So who is behind this and why? Okay, the people behind it are the most powerful people that uh, are there, and they can certainly punish you and punish me. Okay, so naming them is dangerous. However, I can say to you that they have a very strong sense of ethnicity. They know the value of ethnicity because they've been practicing it for a long time. So they know that when you destroy, that they know something, that an ethnic, an ethnicity for, is on a land, it forms its own government and its own community. That's what's called a nation state. If you can break up the nation state, if you can multiculturalize it, mongrelize it, put it as part of the EU or the, the European Union or some multinational body, you can rule them. So who are they? It's very dangerous to name them, but it is the people who make the movies that inculcate the sense of worthlessness in whites. They make the ads. It is they who made the 1965 Immigration Act. Um, it is they who wrote things like, Susan Sontag wrote, The White Race is the Cancer of Human History. If you do you know that? Well, look it up. Susan Sontag wrote in the Partisan Review, this, for all its achievements, the white race is the cancer of human history. It and it alone is responsible for the destruction of the planet, and the massacre of nations, and so forth. There's, it is the people who control the media and now have completely changed the educational system. 